In this video, we'll be talking about the torsional deformation of a circular shaft. You might be wondering what torsion is. Torsion is a type of deformation induced by torsional moments referred to as torque. Torque is a moment that tends to twist the member about its longitudinal axis. The term torque and torsional moment can be used interchangeably as they both represent the same thing. Now let's consider the following diagrams of a circular shaft. This diagram represents a shaft before torque has been applied. The line in red represents the longitudinal axis, while the line in green represents the radial line of the cross section. Note that only the back end of the shaft is fixed. Now, if we twist the front end of the shaft in the counterclockwise directions, or in other words, apply torque, the radial line on the cross section will rotate in the same direction. The new location of the radial line is illustrated with the green dotted line. Now let's look at a more extreme case where we increase the intensity of torque. The longitudinal lines on the shaft continue to twist, forcing it to resemble a helix. The following slide will help analyze the shaft after deformation in more detail. On this slide, we'll look at a few distinct properties of the shaft after deformation has occurred. Notice how the circles remain circles all throughout the shaft. There is no warping at the beginning, middle, or end. Now we'll observe the solid red line. The solid red line represents the longitudinal line before deformation has occurred. Now the dotted red line represents the new location of the longitudinal line after a torsional moment has been applied. As I mentioned on the previous slide, if you were to continue applying torque on the shaft, the dotted red line will begin to resemble a helix. If you're having trouble picturing how it forms a helix, please refer to the previous slide. It's important to know the radial lines on the cross sections remain straight as it's being rotated through the same angle. I've displayed this on the diagram in green. The solid green line represents the radial line before deformation, while the dotted green line represents the same radial line after deformation has occurred. As you might be able to tell, the solid green line was rotated about the angle, but the actual length and shape of the line remained the same. This angle is referred to as the angle of twist, denoted by the symbol phi. As you might be able to tell, the angle of twist varies along the length of the shaft. In other words, the angle phi is a function of the distance x. As I mentioned on the previous slide, the angle of twist varies with x. Now let's consider the figure on the right. Figure A represents a circular shaft, while figure B represents a close-up of a specific element located between the distance x and x plus delta x. To be more specific, we're mainly analyzing this component here. If you're still unsure of what figure B is, I've included the diagram we used on the previous slide to help you understand it better. The undeformed plane is a close-up of this component here, while the deformed plane is a close-up of this component here. Also note, the vertical distance rho, in this case, represents the vertical distance from the axis to the surface of the shaft. And finally, the distance delta x on figure B represents the gap between x and x plus delta x. Now that you understand the figure a little bit better, we can now move on to the points on the slide. Since the angle of twist is a function of x, the angle phi varies depending on its location. In this case, the angle of twist is different at each end of the element. At one end, the angle of twist is a function of x, while on the other end, the angle of twist is a function of x plus delta x. The difference in the angle of twist between the two ends of the element causes the element to be subjected to a shear strain. In other words, we're able to conclude that torsion produces shear stresses and strain. If you don't understand how it produces shear strain, don't worry, we'll be discussing it on the following slide. On this slide, we'll figure out the geometric relationship for shear strain gamma. 
we'll be able to accomplish this by analyzing figure B and the plan view of the element we outlined on the previous slide. The rectangle CABE represents the element before deformation. Now, if we apply a torsional moment T, the side EB will shift in the counterclockwise direction, creating a new rectangle CADE prime. The diagram on the right represents the plan view of the deformed element. Now, let's look at the display section DB. To figure out a geometric relationship for gamma, we'll have to use DB and break it up into known variables. DB represents the arc length of a circular cross section of the shaft. To help visualize this, I've drawn a small diagram with the corresponding variables we'll be using. Now, to obtain the arc length, you would have to multiply the radius rho with the angle delta phi. Now that we know what db is, let's go back to the plan view of the rectangle CADE prime. To obtain the shear strain gamma, we'll have to analyze the triangle outlined in red. To relate the angle gamma with the sides, we'll use tan gamma equals opposite over adjacent which in this case is rho times delta phi divided by delta x. Since the angle tan gamma is incredibly small, we'll simply rename it as just gamma. Therefore, the equation becomes the shear strain gamma equals rho times delta phi divided by delta x. On this slide, we'll continue our explanation of shear strain gamma. To reiterate what we discussed on the previous slide, for an element located at a radial distance rho from the axis of the shaft, the shear strain gamma can be calculated as follows. Gamma equals rho times delta phi divided by delta x. It can also be written as rho times the rate of change of the angle of twist. This is because as the distance x increases, the angle phi will increase accordingly. In other words, the rate of change of phi is constant at a given distance x along the shaft. Rho is the distance along the radial line from the axis to the outer edge of the shaft. Rho varies linearly from zero at the center of the shaft to a maximum equal to the outer radius of the cross section. Rho equals c when rho is equal to the outer radius of the shaft. Shear strain follows a similar trend as rho, where shear strain is zero when rho equals zero, and shear strain is at the maximum when rho equals c. Now we'll derive the equation used to determine the shear strain at any point along rho. We'll start off with this component here. We're able to determine this part by utilizing the equation we derived on the previous slide. If we isolate for the rate of change of phi, will be left with gamma divided by rho. Now we'll look at this component here. We utilize the same equation as before, however I replace rho with c, which gives us the maximum shear strain. Once again, if we isolate for the rate of change of phi, we'll be left with maximum shear strain divided by c. Notice how both the equations equal the rate of change of phi. To simplify this equation, will equal two equations together and isolate for shear strain, which leads to this following equation. Now this is the equation used to determine the shear strain at any point along rho. Now this concludes the video regarding the torsional deformation of a circular shaft. In this video, we discussed what torsion is and how it relates to shear strain. We also derived a few equations relating the angle of twist and shear strain with the geometry of the shaft. In the following video, we'll be going over the next section regarding the torsion formula.